Okay, we've been working for proportions for a while, and today we're just going to talk about different ways to solve it, uh, how to show your work, and then some properties of proportions. So what a proportion is simply is just two equal ratios. So for example, if I have a ratio of 2 to 5, I have infinitely many proportions I can create. One of them is, you know, 4 to 10, because all I did was simply double the top and double the bottom. So the proportion would be 2 fifths equals 4 over 10. Um, likewise, we could have, you know, start with a ratio of 2 to 3. And if we triple the top and triple the bottom, we end up that that is 6 over 9. So 2 thirds is 6 over 9. There are also ways that we can rearrange these numbers, and it still is true. So for instance, I can flip both sides, and it would be true that 3 halves is the same thing as 9 6. So if I flip both sides, this is true. I can also... Um, reflect the left and the right. So instead of two-thirds on the left, we can switch them around, and that is still true this way. And there's also a way that we can do it so that we can say a ratio of two to six is equal to a ratio of three to nine. Okay, so there are many proportions that we could create that would be okay. And the fastest way to determine if your proportion is the same is to compare the cross products. So what you see, what I mean by that, is if you look across top and bottom this way, it's 18 here, and then 2 times 9 is also 18 here. So both cross products will be identical if these are in fact equal. So the fastest way to look is say if I have a 2 times a 9 in one direction, a 2 times a 9 in one direction, and a 2 times a 9 in one direction. If you do, all of your, your proportions are okay. All right, so let's talk about how to solve proportions. So how to solve. We're going to have two methods. The first method is called the scale factor method. And with this, you're going to want to draw some arrows in the direction of the thing that you're trying to solve. So draw arrows towards your unknown, okay? because that is part of your work, is to draw these arrows. So when I solve a proportion, that means that I'm going to have something missing from one of these positions. I'll have three pieces of information and ask to find the fourth. So for instance, if we have, for example, um, 4 is 2 7, so 4 7 equals x over 21. Here, this one's easy to solve with the scale factor method because you look, and I'm going to look in this direction towards my x, which means I'm going to look in this direction. If you compare these two numbers, 21 is 3 times bigger than 7. So all you do is tell me what this scale factor is. And remember, a factor is something that I multiply by. So because 21 is 3 times 7, x is 3 times 4. So x is 12, okay? So that is showing your work with the scale factor method. And based on what we did up here, there are also another way that I could look to see what the scale factor is. For instance, if I have the proportion x over 10 is equal to 7 over 30, and I'm told to solve it, um, we could look towards the x, towards the x, and here we're getting smaller, and we're getting smaller by a factor of a third. So I'm taking a third, I'm taking a third, and a third of seven is simply seven thirds. You don't actually have to divide it. As long as your fraction is simplified, you're good. So a third of seven is seven thirds. Now we can look this direction too. So if we have four twelfths is equal to some number over five, I look at 12 and five and they're not really multiples of each other, but if I compare it this way, like we were able to do up here, I see that going towards x, going towards x, is um, a third, again, and this one would be then a third of 5. So x should be equal to, let's see, x is equal to a third of 5, 5 thirds. The other way you could have thought about this is you see a ratio over here, 4 over 12. If you simplify by dividing each by 4, I get 1 over 3. And then you can think about it that way too. Okay? Sometimes you're going to have to, you're going to find, um, no matter which way that you look at the comparison, the numbers aren't multiples of each other. And for that, we really want you to use MPO. Okay? And remember, MPO stands for the multiplication property of equality. So these are equations. They're just 
showing that two fractions are the same. So in this case, we'll have something like 5 over 9 is equal to x over 4. And no matter which way I look, all of these numbers are relatively prime. So we treat this just like when we first started doing equations. What's happening to x? Well, x is being divided by 4. So to undo that, the opposite would be that you're multiplying by 4. What I do to one side, I do the other. That's the property of equality. Prove that these guys cancel out. Isolate x. And then if you like it, you can put that over 1. So it becomes 45 over 9. And again, x is the rational number 45 ninths. As long as your fraction is simplified, you're OK. okay so here we have an instance where nothing is happening to x. So if, this, if you get something like this, we have to make sure that x, um, we, we can undo what's the action towards x. So to get x on the top, you take the reciprocal of this side. What you do to the other, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay, so x has to be on the top, and then we can do the impo of the denominator. So I impo 11, cancel, cancel, impo 11. So I get that x is equal to 8 times 11, 88 thirds, and it's relatively prime. I knew that because if I do a quick check, I can't simplify here, I can't simplify 11 over 3, so we're okay. okay? The last thing that we're going to talk about is when you're doing sort of applied proportions, if it's a word problem type thing, you really want to try to set this up with units. So your word problems have to have units. Okay, so has units. And you're going to prove that your proportion is correct when we see that the units are lined up either top and uh, side to side or top and bottom. Okay? So for instance, if you had something like this, um, your first one is uh, earn $54 54 dollars for mowing three lawns and then it could ask you a question like um, if you're charged the same amount how much would you earn for five lawns so earnings for five lawns okay and this thing we're not actually going to do a unit rate anymore you're going to try to think about it holistically and in, in, as a proportion so I think the thing that I'm looking for is the money, and I want to strategically put the thing that I'm looking for in this position of your proportion. The reason is because it's already um, in the position we want it to be if we needed to impo, and if you're using the scale factor, the reason we read things left to right is because that's exactly what we do in English. So I start here and I'm going this direction. So if we put it here, it's a lot easier to work with. So how much of the earnings, so we're looking for money, for five lawns. So here's one way we can set this up. So if I put lawns on the bottom here, I'm going to put lawns on the bottom. So here is me proving that the numbers that I'm about to put in actually line up. Okay? So here's a proportion that works. Lawns on the bottom, lawns on the top. And then you can solve it however you wish. So me, I see that I can impo 5. Impo 5. And then your answer is 5 times 54 divided by 3. Okay? So that would be the, the money earned for the lawns. Okay. Um, for now, okay, so 5 times 54, and then you can divide it by 3, gives you $90 per uh, 5 lawns. So x would be the $90, and that's the price for moving 5 lawns. All right. So now try these on your own for do now number 1, and I want you to solve for the unknown using either the uh, scale factor method showing your arrows, and your scale factor, or you can use impo. Okay? So for this one, I looked, and you might have noticed that you could have simplified here if you had wanted to. So 14 over 8 isn't relatively prime. But if you wanted, you just saw that x was on top. Go ahead and impo the 14, impo the 14. And then maybe you see that it's more obvious to divide 14 and 8 by the common factor of 2. So I half it, and then I half it. And then x is equal to 3 times 7, 21 over 4. Okay, so it is relatively prime. Go ahead and leave it alone. Here we have a problem because I can't simplify, I can't simplify, nor is x on the top. So your first step is to get x on the top. And then you can impo the denominator of x, so impo the 6. Um, here I can simplify 6 over 21 by dividing by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So therefore x is equal to 2 times 5, that's a 10, over 7. 
So again, it's okay to have a, um, a, a fraction because this we're just looking for what is the value of x, not that entire ratio. Okay, So here we have another, and you could have info by 5 if you wanted, or if you looked over here, we have 12 over 2, which is the unsimplified fraction. So if I half both of them, we get 6 over 1, and then you can kind of do the scale factor method this way. And you see that from 1 to 5 is a factor of 5. So if you multiply 6 by 5, you'll get the answer is 30. Okay? And just like any other equation that we do, you can do a mental check with these because there's only one solution to this. If I divide 30 by 5, it is 6. Right? 30 divided by 5 is 6. If I divide 12 by 2, it's also 6. So 6 equals 6. So with this stuff, it might be worth your time, especially if it's not so obvious to do it mentally, to go ahead and plug your value in for here. Do the math, and the left should equal the right.